So how's everybody doing? Living the dream. Used to read Word Up magazine. <laughs> Word Up That's magazine. So, uh... That's, a, that's not how the song starts. So, are you talking about Biggie Smalls? Is that Biggie Always, Smalls? Bro. That is Biggie Smalls, right? What, bro? I wasn't talking about Tupac. Tupac Shacker? Yeah, bro. Tupac is the hardest intro in history, bro. Right. We're going to start a Tupac tribute band with Biggie yeah. Smalls. The white versions because of them. First off, you fat mother effer. I F your B. Like, that's such a hard Who's going to be Tupac and who's going to be Biggie? Bro. I'm gonna have to be Biggie. You have to be Biggie. Okay, I'll be Tupac. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get a, I got a fake tattoo at every time. You're gonna, you're gonna get Fat Tupac. So every time I come on stage, it's gonna be a Thug Life, but instead it's gonna say Fat Life. <laughs> That's it. Let's let's get this fucking party started. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? With episode 102 of the Mindless War podcast, I'm your host Anthony. Uh, that's Logan. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? The diss. He didn't even say that's Sammy, man. <laughs> I know. Nope. Somebody was going to say No, nope, you don't I care. You, the, the, the last couple of podcasts, my respect for Sammy has been way down. And I don't remember <laughs> why this was down. Uh, do you remember why my, why I don't? Have was it something respect? to do with uh, something he liked or something that he agreed with or? It was okay. It was because he loved the new Grudge movie. Yeah, I yeah. Sorry, Sammy. <laughs> the Americanized piece it. of shit Grudge movie. There's only very few horror movies I love, and Us is one of them. Us is a fucking f- masterpiece, dude. Yeah, Us what is about, great. But, the, the classic but, monsters, dude, have to be on there. Yeah, Us is great, but it, did you just say that you don't even love mini horror movies? Is that what I just heard come out of your mouth? That's yeah. Okay, Did but look, before we get started with that argument, let's be real. The guy hasn't seen a lot of movies in general, horror movies at least. He's seen a lot of movies, but he hasn't seen a lot of horror movies in general. You are on a YouTube channel called The Knights of Horror. I, I, Sammy probably thought, oh, it's the Knights of, it's the Knights of Horrors. That sounds great. No, 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 horror. horror. Yeah, that's how, that's how he got me. What's funny Two is different movies. And I'm bringing this up. I brought this up last time. Logan was a fan. Now he's dragged into all the bullshit. I was a fan, and I joined too. Yeah. So the only reason I joined was because I subscribed to Sammy's OnlyFans, and then he asked uh, because I was the top. I was the top fucking subscriber on that. Mm-hmm. But hey, do you want to be a part of my YouTube channel? And you uh, said my so, YouTube channel, Sammy. What are yeah, you doing? He, he said, he said his YouTube channel, and he said, I'll do it at, uh, in exchange for feet pics, and uh, I couldn't pass that up. Damn. Damn. Could not pass that up. Did huh? not pass that up. Um, True story. It, it's, been a, it's been a week, but we've uh, it's, uh, as we're recording this, it's about to be 4th of July weekend, so I hope everyone was safe over the weekend. Um, everyone didn't do, hopefully, uh, giant gatherings, and, of course, followed your COVID guidelines and all that. Because uh, we're trying Kovic to guidelines. Kovic, yeah, uh, we're trying to save haunt season, everybody. So please, please wear your mask. Please, please follow guidelines, physical distancing, all that fun stuff. Because uh, we want to have a haunt season this year, man. We really do. Um. So. Uh. Oh, speaking of masks, we have new merchandise on our store. We have what? Knights of Horror face masks as well as Mindless Horror Podcast face mask and East versus West face mask. East versus West is right there. I got that perfect. I'm a fucking professional. Are you? You're looking at the new Made in USA guitar player right here. That is false information <laughs> I'm lying. No, wait a minute. Are you gonna, so, so are you going to take my spot or are you going to take the other guy's spot? We're going to be in there together. Um, well, being that I don't know the other guy, I'm going to take his spot. Oh, gotcha. okay. At least we could jam out together and, you know, have fun on that end. Bro, it's, so it's not air guitaring, though. Oh, I know. It's it's not. I didn't say it was going to be good guitar, but it's going to be guitar. Bro, can you even play a chord? I can play Smoke on the Water. It's good enough. I'll let you be in the band if I get a lifetime supply of beat picks. Oh, okay. Sammy, I can arrange that. You want it from me <laughs> or from, from Sammy? Uh, Well, I mean... I already get some from Sammy for being on the channel. So. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a we have a pretty good show today. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Um, a lot of good stuff that stuff that got even announced today as of this recording. So that's really cool. Um, and we're gonna start off uh, updating you on Rob Zombie's Firefly trilogy. Of course, we talked a little bit about last week of how it's coming, getting a steelbook release uh, from the entire trilogy from Rob Zombie himself. We officially got a um, uh, a release date and a um, a look of where it's going to be. So it looks like Target's going to get the exclusive steelbook uh, as far as that goes, and it's going to get a um, September release. Uh, of course, you know the Firefly trilogy, including House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, and um, the most recent installment of the franchise. Uh, Three from Hell. Three from Hell. Three from Hell. So it says the Target exclusive Blu-ray plus digital steelbook will be released on September 8th, 2020. Pre-order your copy now for $30 and check out the brand new art below. So, of course, the art that we showed or the art that was uh, shown uh, with that, um, it's, it's a really cool steelbook uh, and it looks dope. I think 30 bucks. that's not bad. That's roughly around 10 bucks a movie. So that's pretty fair, especially with the cool steelbook. Uh, physical horror media buff guy. Okay, so am I the buff guy, or am I the physical media buff guy? Like, I, I'm just a physical media buff, or am I a physical media buff guy? Like, I, I thought you were the content sewer, bro. Content sewer. I, don't, I didn't know the words, so, I, you know, that's Sammy. Yeah, Sammy knows the big sewer. words out of all of us, probably. Did I, did I hear you say condom sewer? Condom sewer. Yeah. That's exactly what This podcast went to a whole different route. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cold open started it, so... Um, no, dude, I, okay, so I don't even own any of those movies, um, so this is the perfect, uh, opportunity for me to buy them, and 30 bucks is a fantastic, uh, fantastic deal, considering that they're Blu-rays, you know, uh, Blu-rays, I mean, you can find cheap Blu-rays, you know, anywhere, but for these movies, 10 bucks a Blu-ray and, in a Steelbook, uh, limited edition case, it's fantastic. I think it's, is it a, is it a limited run? Did it, they say it was a limited edition? It might uh, be. I think Rob Zombie's right now very much teasing it, like pre-order your copy now before they sell out. So it looking yeah, like it's going to be very 30 exclusive. Bucks, Thirty bucks is not bad for something like that. Um, I'm surprised to see it go to uh, Target and not Best Buy. Usually, Best Buy is known for doing you know that kind of thing with when it comes to steelbooks in general. Um, right. But no, I'm I'm all for it, man. I'm gonna go pick that up uh, as soon as it comes out. Like I said in the in the last podcast, I'm not even a huge Rob Zombie film fan. Um, I, I've got a couple of his that I like, um, but I, I've got so many movies on my shelf that I dislike. I dislike them because of, you know, I just I'm OCD when it comes to like uh, any, especially a horror movie. Um, but I feel like that trilogy uh, just needs to be on my shelf. Let's just put uh, it this way: Logan has a movie, uh, uh, a foreign horror movie. He bought it just for the sole purpose of it having the song "Flash of the Blade" from Iron Maiden in it. That's why he has it. <laughs> So yeah, what he's referring to is uh, Dario Argento's uh, Phenomena. Uh, fantastic movie. Um, it it just ha- so I watched it because it had an Iron Maiden song in it. it turned out to be a great movie. Um, but that was the, seriously the sole purpose of why I watched it. Because of Iron Maiden. You, you you and I were I think it was after my debut uh, on the channel right when, when we did the intro. Later, after we did our, our video, I was telling you about this movie, um, and then uh, you were like, "You were like, because we were talking about Flash of the Blade, that's that's great Iron Maiden song. One of my favorites. Uh, it's a total deep cut. Uh, they've never played it live. So Anthony was just uh, thrilled that a movie would feature an Iron Maiden deep cut, and I was too. So um, no, totally watched that movie. It's got Donald Pleasance in it, who of course uh, plays Doctor Loomis in Halloween. Uh, and the leading girl is Jennifer Connelly, who was in Labyrinth and um, all kinds of other 80s films and whatnot. Uh, but anyways, it's a great movie. It's weird. Give it a watch if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you're an Iron Maiden fan, it's it's worth it just to see that song. In the movie. Right. Sammy, what are your thoughts on the Firefly trilogy? I think you've only seen – have you seen any of them? You've seen Devil's Rejects. I have seen uh, two of the three. House of Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. And we watched House of Thousand Corpses because of Horror Nights list last year. That is correct. Right. I had never had an interest to watch House of a Thousand Corpses. Did you like it at um, all? I, I did not, actually. I was not a big fan of it. Um, but I, we also watched it under uh, a live stream circumstance, so I really didn't pay attention. Like, Oh, yeah, the volume was very I, low. and 
Yeah, and a lot of talking between I was us. Kind of like I was like, there's a, like, what the heck's really going on in this movie? Like, what kind of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff is this? It's um, hillbilly horror. Hillbilly horror, man. <laughs> it's really hillbilly horror. That's just <laughs> Rob Zombie's dude. Rob Zombie, you know, he's a freaking hillbilly because he's got a fucking album called Hellbilly Deluxe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I loved the Devil's Rejects. Yeah, and I really love the end of the Devil's Rejects because Freebird. Freebird, bro. <laughs> that's Hands shit. down, probably the greatest horror movie ending of all time. Like, not even that's not even. There's no say so in it. You 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 put Freebird in a fucking ending of a movie, dude. You got me hooked. Like, especially the way it was shot. Like, oh my god, dude. And they went to the even as far as to go to the guitar solo, dude. Yeah. That's probably one of the greatest guitar solos I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I love, okay, well, we're not talking about fucking Leonard Skinner. We're talking about. <laughs> Devil's Rejects. That Freebird's a great song, uh, but to say it's the best ending to any horror movie of all time, it's bull. a good ending. It's a good ending, but bull. <laughs> it's a great ending. Uh, it, I, you know, I, that's my opinion ball. though. You guys uh, may have different horror movies you like. I think that's probably one of the freaking best horror movie endings of all time. Uh, I really uh, thought the Grudges I, ending was really good. Um, the twenty nine. Uh, Logan, where's the respect version? bar at now? It was so good. I don't even remember what happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with Sammy though. Uh, when he didn't really like House of a Thousand Corpses, I, it's not that I dislike House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, I just don't get why it has such a huge, uh, devoted fan base. I mean, it, it. I mean, it was entertaining nonetheless. Uh, I, 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 I had seen it and I rewatched it too because of. Uh, haunt season last year announced you know they announced that they had the maze so after yeah. the announcement i went back and watched it and um they had of course had uh they've had that maze a couple of times uh last time before Four? last year Four was times. 2011 wasn't it 2011 Four was times. the last time they did it before the movie came out because it was original concept that murdy and zombie came up with and then they did it and then rob zombie did the movie and then they did it again in 2010 and then again in 2011 and then they did it last year no, I, I, I think it's I think it's an entertaining flick. Uh, I think it's when it comes to Rob Zombie's films, uh, it's definitely up there, uh, probably in my top three. Uh, but honestly, I, not not dissing on Rob Zombie at all. I think he's he's good at the niche thing that he does. Like he's good at what he does. Um, if you like that, his movies are an acquired taste. Um, you just have to be, it's, it's, it's either your thing or it's not, it's not necessarily my thing, but I can still be entertaining. I can still be entertained by watching his movies. Um, but I'm with Sammy. I, I don't blame Sammy for not liking it. Um, I definitely don't think it's all that. I, I know Anthony's like probably wanting to hit me because I know he loves Rob Zombie. Um, I have a, I I'm a very big fan of his. I wouldn't say go, I wouldn't go as far as saying love him, but he's, I like his music, and being that House of Thousand Corpses was his debut film. Um, I like the, honestly, I like the gore and the horror behind it, because if you look at a movie like House of Thousand Corpses, and you look at a movie like Devil's Rejects, House of Thousand Corpses went straight for like a horror mystic movie, whereas Devil's yeah. Rejects was literally just a, a movie about criminals on the run killing people. Yeah. So, and Three from Hell followed that, so. And, and I'm gonna, uh, sorry, go ahead, Sammy. See that, that that was my problem with there being it, making it a Firefly trilogy. Yeah, is they should have died at the end of two. They went out in a blaze of glory, um, and like as much as like I feel like the reason why I didn't like House of a Thousand Corpses is you don't really get a lot of the characters I enjoyed in uh, the Devil's, Devil's Rejects. Rejects. You don't get like Spalding as much. Um, you get the entire family, which is cool, but like I really enjoyed the more personal. Lies, um, <clears throat> and I've and I and I've, I've noticed uh, people who have seen Devil's Rejects before they see House of Thousand Corpses usually have that same opinion. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like a weird analogy, but um, the game Skyrim. If you've played Skyrim, you don't like Oblivion, which came before Skyrim. Right. So you know, uh, it, it's just it's how it goes. Yeah. No, I, I think I, I think with me is. I, I was on the same boat, though. I watched Devil's Rejects first, and then I went back to watch House, House oh. of a Thousand Corpses. But I, 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 for some reason, I think I fell in love with the characters. So I just – the movie to me was – I love the way uh, House of a Thousand Corpses was shot. The colors that they used um, was very, like, like very creep show-like. 
you know, yeah. with the whole the, were good. the blue and the red and you know all that. Um, and it actually <laughs> in, in that movie, it, it's it's how I discovered the song uh, "Sniff Some Glue" by the Ramones. Um, I remember hearing that song like, "Holy shit, this song's great!" And this is the Ramones. That's great. Um, but no, and I think with Three from Hell, like I know he wanted it to be. Sid Haig, you know, uh, Sherry Moon Zombie, and uh, Bill Moisley. But, of course, Sid Haig was very sick and was dying at the time, so they were lucky just to do what they did with him in that film. Um, the original script, though, was supposed to be them three again on the run. Um, but, of course, he had to do a lot of changes, like, a little bit before they started filming because Sid Haig was in the, in the state of not being able to do much. And he tried to cut it down where he can have him in half the movie, and that still didn't work. And then he just he's lucky enough to get him in the in the parts that he did uh but yeah i mean i i think uh bringing in that third character wasn't necessarily the plan but it was the last minute decision he had to make and he had to work around that so i think that's why three from hell gets a lot of hate because of that fact like i don't know if a lot of people really know the backstory behind that but three from hell i think gets a lot of hate because it's not the entire the entire devil's rejects that you saw from the House of Thousand Corpses and, and Devil's Rejects. But nonetheless, I know a lot of people um, always say, like, why don't they bring, like, Three from Hell or Devil's Rejects to H E Ten? It doesn't work like House of Thousand Corpses does. I'll just go out and straight out say it. House of Thousand Corpses yeah, is a horror movie. Devil's Rejects and Three from Hell is more of a, like, action thriller type movie on the run. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's killing and gore in it, but... It's just more, most of them on the run. You know, there's not really any horror aspect to it. Like in, in the first movie, they're they're sacrificing someone to a, a, a guy named Doctor Satan. Like, and you don't see you don't see or hear anything about Doctor Satan in the rest of the two movies. So it's like <laughs> that, that's just, it, it's, it's funny to me. So you know what I felt like was a um, total missed opportunity last year was um, that they uh, didn't have Captain Spaulding's fried chicken. Uh, you know, like a fried chicken stand, like they like did a theme with food. Yeah, like how they did with Ghostbusters and uh, Stranger, Stranger Things. things yeah. it, I mean, probably some. I mean, Stranger Things and Ghostbusters are off are obviously more popular IPs. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. It could have been cool if they did. Something like that. Well, not to it, mention, right outside the Waterworld queue, there's a restaurant right there. They could have like easily put it yeah, themed it for Horror Nights. You know. Murdy, so. bring me on to your creative team, man. I got ideas for you. Watch Maze Tree, bro. Especially, especially this. After Sid, after Sid Haig had died, I feel like the popularity of the maze skyrocketed. Yeah. Uh, Even though it was like a twenty-minute really, wait every time we went. <laughs> well, yeah, but I felt like it would have been worse had he not died. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't really getting the hype it deserved. Hashtag but free think, the three, man. Free the three, always, bro. And rest in peace, uh, Sid, bro. Yep. But you gotta. If they would have sold the chicken, I think a lot of people would have bought it just because today an honor said. Yeah, that would have been a video that we would have sure as hell made. Um, it'd, be in cool if they, it'd be really cool if they had a stand and they had like an impersonator being Captain Spaulding, like yeah. just, you know, like cussing at you while you're like ordering. <laughs> I will say this though: Orlando's maze was, last year was phenomenal. They hit it out yeah. of the ballpark. I feel like we got gypped. Yeah. But then again, like they got a better Stranger Things maze last year. They got better. They yeah, get better everything. Let's be honest. <laughs> I think our I think our Killer Clowns was was better. I think uh, our Killer Clowns, and I talked about this with Eddie. Our Killer Clowns was more loyal to the movie, following from yeah. start to finish, rather than theirs was more of a scenic. Um, sure. Oh, here's a scene here. Here's a scene there. You know, and it was more of just like just for scenery. Um, right. Nonetheless, it was still a solid maze, but we used of and course Mazzari's soundtrack and then they didn't so so shout out to you john love you buddy <laughs> um all right mike flanagan uh pretty well out there in the horror world director yeah. um is doing stephen king's revival um now i'm not really too familiar with this property uh, but from what I'm seeing, it looks like it has something to do with the circus because there is a circus tent uh, in the picture for Bloody Disgusting's article. Um, so it says, announced back in May, Mike Flanagan is on board to write, produce, and potentially direct an adaptation of Stephen King's revival for Warner Brothers, and he promises the film won't have the sentimentally uh, sentimentality of his previous King uh, adaptations, Gerald's Game and Doctor Sleep. 
Speaking to the King cast this week, Flanagan teased a downright bleak and mean movie. And he goes on to say, What I love about it is it's a return of cosmic horror, which I think is so fun. It is relentlessly dark and uh, cynical, and I'm enjoying the hell out of that. This is a bleak and mean... This is just bleak and mean. Yeah. So, uh, Michael Flanagan is a uh, great modern director. Um, for horror. I, I loved Doctor. So um, Michael Flanagan is a, uh, I, I think is a great up and coming horror director. Right. He of course did Doctor Sleep. I don't know if you guys saw that. Very. Uh, yeah, I saw it at least. It was better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, it was much better than I thought it was going to be. I went into that theater. Uh, was it came out like what last November? Yeah. Yeah, came out, yeah last November. Yeah. And I, I went in that theater just not really expecting uh, anything great because honestly, the last couple of uh, movies about anything that was written by King, like um, it chapter two, like put a bad taste in my mouth. I know a lot of people liked it and a lot of people hated it. Um, I just I don't hate it, but I just wasn't really impressed with it. Um, but it was it entertained me uh, nonetheless. But um, so that with that in the back of my mind going into Doctor Sleep, I'm like, all right, we're gonna get another you know half-assed Stephen King um, adaptation. And I love Doctor Sleep. I think Michael Flanagan was did a great job, and I watched all the bonus features on the Blu-ray. The song, all the love that was put into that film, and you could tell he's a big Stephen King fan. Yeah. So he's the right person to do something like this. I never read. Uh, I never read that book called. What is it? Uh, revival? revival is that revival? Yeah, the revival. one he's working on now. I, I never read it. I read a lot of Stephen King stuff. I love Stephen King. Um, I, I haven't picked up a, a book in a long time. I I, I hate to say it, um, <laughs> but I used to read a lot. Uh, but I never read that book. Um, but if, if I'm going to read the premise after we're done, and if it sounds good to me, then I'll consider reading it. But uh, Michael Flanagan just seems like the guy to get. Gerald's Game was great. It was another movie that I wasn't really, you know, excited about, but ended up really enjoying. Uh, Sammy, have you have you seen any, any of those movies? Or you, well, you read hold it? on, before we go to Sammy, Mike Flanagan did he do Haunting a Hill House as well? Yes, he did. He did, right? Yes, he did. And that movie and did. that show was fucking fantastic from I'm start to finish. Look it up, but- yeah, I think he did. I want to. I want to say I'm 99 percent sure. I think it is because I, I I remember being excited for him being on board for Doctor Sleep, and I'm like, dude, he he hit yeah. it out of the park with Haunting the Hill House. So he did, he did it. He is um he is becoming just a him and uh oh I'm drawing a blank uh Jordan Peele. Yeah. Him and Jordan Peele when it comes to, when it comes to new horror directors, like they're killing it. Right. They're totally killing it. Go ahead, Sammy. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, definitely. If Mike Flanagan, I haven't seen Doctor Sleep, but I've heard nothing but good things about Doctor Sleep. It's on Voodoo. I know you get a chance. About to, I, I knew you were about to say that. Go check it on Voodoo. You know where it be. Fourth of July weekend. You're probably gonna do nothing. You pop it on with the fan. I have a whole room to build this weekend. <laughs> uh, at night, when you're well, winding down. I mean, it is two and a half hours. I know you might fall asleep, but it's okay. Look, that's a guarantee. That's a, that's a, that's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, back to back to seriousness. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a, probably a really good thing. Um, I agree with Logan that, you know, the last few Stephen King movies haven't been that great. Like, It Chapter 2 was good, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Pet Cemetery was... I don't even All right. have words to that. <laughs> I, will defend that movie. I will defend that movie uh, until the day I die. I think it's a misunderstood movie. And honestly, I, I went into that theater like thinking uh, it was like a five dollar Tuesday night, and, and my, my 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 friend Adam and I were big horror junkies. Uh, Adam, I haven't mentioned him. He actually was a big influence as a, in my childhood, getting me into horror. Uh, but he he and I went to uh, go see Pet Cemetery. We were both like, "This is gonna be shit." Like we're only here because it was five bucks. And we both looked at each other at the end. We're like, "Okay, you know what?" Like I don't know what the bad reviews are all about. It's it it went in its own direction, and I respected the boldness yeah. that that it did. I spoilers alert if you haven't if you haven't seen uh, the it's new. It's been like two episode. years now. You you yeah. Had time. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I liked that it was the daughter dying instead of the, the son. son. Case. 
because it was more scary. She was a little older and she was just a little more sinister than Kate. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's face it. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the original is a classic. The original film is in the 80s. But it was more, I, I, I laugh every time I, I see the, the little kid coming at him with a little fucking scalpel or whatever. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but it was more sinister in, in, uh, in the remake. I don't know. Like, I think the remake is a bad rap, man. I, you know so, what? I think uh, it's a lot more darker. And I like that. And the ending was cool, too, because it's like, oh, shit. Like, uh, again, spoilers. Uh, the family's about to fucking kill this little kid. That's fucked up. Yeah. What's up, I just didn't like that. I wanted the kid to live. But it was cool. Like, you weren't expecting that. And well, the and then it just leaves you, you like, it just leaves you with that. You're not, you don't yeah. know what happens. They just walk and unlock the door, and that's it. And yes. that, and the part with the fucking Aunt Zelda or, or whatever. Uh, the oh, fucking, Zelda? Dude, that, she, she scared me in the, uh, in the original. But in this one, she was pretty sinister as well. Like, yeah. the jump scare where she looks into the, she opens the fucking mirror cabinet. And then out comes fucking Zelda. Like, that was scary. Fuck that, dude. So, yeah. Honestly, like, it, it's not an amazing movie. But honestly, I gave it, like, a, like an 8 out of 10 just for it being bold and going in new directions. And so it, what he's basically yeah, saying in a nice way, Sammy, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me feet fixed. <laughs> so what I want to go back to is The Grudge 2020 was a – a far superior film. I always forget that came out in 2020, too. It was in January, but we saw it, like, in September. We saw it way before. Yeah, we got to see an early I literally told everyone, please do not watch it. I told my dad, I'm like, yo, shit, don't money. watch it. Don't even watch it when it comes on cable. It's horrible. You can watch it when it's free. Yeah, don't even do that. And you have, and you have two hours literally to kill. But you're spending your time, even though it's free. So like that's like I don't even know if it's worth the time. It's not. Like so, like if you need to put something on in the background, and pay like slightly pay attention, but not really pay attention, you can put that movie on. How about you just, just watch the new Netflix not- prequel? Even better. Uh, yes, just- it, it, it comes out this month now. I read. Yeah. Yeah. So Sammy said that he loved it a couple of podcasts ago. Um, and I'm I'm happy to see that you're not defending it. So the the scale on you know this when it comes to respect, uh, that scale is going up just a little bit. You're you're getting it back just a tad. And maybe 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 next podcast I will introduce you. Maybe even this is a this is just pushing it though. But if you're in town, maybe <laughs> backstage at a Made in USA concert. Maybe maybe maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll give you a pick. Maybe. So so, so, so fucking Anthony's gonna come, and then the the, the security guard's gonna tell Sammy, "No, sorry." And Sammy's gonna go, "Oh, but I'm with that guy," and I'm gonna go, "Who?" <laughs> I'm gonna walk through. Bro, well, no buddy, more... it's nice knowing you. I'll see you after the concert. <laughs> no more feet picks, then, bro. No, knowing Sammy, dude, I'm not even lying, and I'm not even trying to be mean or anything. He'd probably go find somewhere and nap. <laughs> but... It doesn't matter how fucking loud the music is. He'll he'll nap through it. I've seen him nap through a fucking wrestling event. <laughs> so, cool. you know. Hey, Sammy, I, I had I, to, I, I, I had to I tell this to you. You probably did. Sammy, I I swear to you, the next made in US the next made in USA show after this whole coronavirus bullshit dies down, if I am on stage and if I see you sleeping in the audience i will get on the mic and i will stop the music and i will call you out (laughs) (laughs) i'm not even joking i'm not even joking challenge that seems like a challenge Uh oh actually i I will get his attention on stage i'd be like logan (laughs) and then i just point at him like this is gonna happen i actually don't want this to happen (laughs) <laughs> Midway through the trooper, you're gonna piss off so many fucking fans, <laughs> bro. I will fall I'm not gonna piss the... off fans. Sammy's gonna piss off fans. <laughs> I'm gonna fall asleep like through um, Rhyming the Ancient Mariner. Is that so that way they have to restart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Halfway through it, then you gotta just restart it from the beginning. Thirteen minute song. You gotta start starting over. Um, bro, if you talk, from the top. <laughs> Um, if you fall asleep to run to the hills, I'd be okay, and I just wouldn't restart it. I'd say, okay, I'm not playing that again. Uh, Bro, but, that's my favorite but, Maiden song. Shut the fuck up. I swear. I think you're going to lose I, all the respect for me. Because, uh, I, I, okay, so I know we're getting off topic here, but while we're on it, uh, so I quit the band, and recently I rejoined Maiden USA. 
when I was in the band, uh, when I was first in the band, I was making the set list, and I made, I made damn sure I never put Run to the Hills on, uh, on the set list. It was never on the set list when I was in the band. And be, and after I left, obviously, uh, someone else was making the set list, um, and they started adding that. So now when I came back, like now I'm forced to fucking play that song. Uh, Can you give it, me a reason it, as to why you hate that song so much? Uh, you know, is it because it's just so played out? First of all, I, I don't have a guitar solo in that song. I'm just playing fucking chords through the whole thing. It's boring as shit to play. Um, but also, it's just annoying. Like, I, I know everybody, like, like, that's probably one of their most famous songs ever. Um, I, but I maybe thought that's this was. Why. Well, Never the Beast and Rent, Run to the Hills and The Trooper, I think, are, like, they're, like, those are their top three, you know. Like, if you're a casual fan, you, you know what those songs are. Yeah. Uh, but honestly... I know we're like way off topic here. Well, Maiden's but, more, so. Uh, but I I know we're way off top, but honestly, I just don't I don't know. Ever since I was a kid, like there were just so many better songs. It was such a simple and basic song where their other shit was was more melodic and it, it the, what they had to say was uh was more historical. I know Run to the Hills is historical, but I don't know. I, there was compared to the likes of like. We Turner, lost them. There, we go. there was just so much. There was just better shit. Uh, so I mean, honestly, on because Run to the Hills is off the Number of the Beast album. I like every song on that album except for Run to the Hills. Can we can we get more <laughs> Peace of Mind album? You know, I I will fight I will fight for you on that. Uh, I want to play Die with Your Boots on. I want to play To Tame a Land. I want to play Where Eagles Dare. Um, it's gonna happen. I don't know how soon, but we dude honestly like we've got so many fucking uh, songs that we want to play what we're thinking about doing and once coronavirus is over and feel free to edit this too because we're now we're making this all about iron maiden which i'm okay with uh, i'm not gonna edit it <laughs> it's raw and uncut we, raw we, uncut that sounds it's a wild card it's my idea uh, <laughs> we um we have this idea of playing iron maiden albums from start to finish like uh we're working on that right now the first album we- well, we, we, we want to go through their whole catalog. We, we, we want to do it like a series because no tribute band really does this. But we want to do a series of, okay, tonight we're going to perform all of uh, uh, Power Slave uh, in its entirety, all of Never the Beast, all of Peace of Mind in its entirety, you know, at different shows. So, like, if you want to make it to that show and you want to see that album, you know, played live from start to finish, like, you got to make sure you're there. So, I don't know. It's just a unique concept that we've got going on. What but, about the albums that have not as much songs as the other albums? Because I know there's a couple albums that only have well, a few songs. Well, I don't think we're going to do that for every album. Like, there are some albums that I refuse to play. Uh, like, after Bruce left and they got, what's his name? Blaze, Blaze Bailey. There's, like, two Blaze Bailey songs that I like. Uh, those are their worst albums. We'll never play those. But, but um, Live After Death, that whole set list. Well, that, well, so Live After Death on the Power Slave tour. Um, so we we we've contemplated if we want to just do live after death because honestly we 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 play all of live after death maybe not in order but uh, in past shows like we have pretty much put every song in live after death uh, but what we're thinking about doing is doing power slave which of course they've got songs on that on that album that uh, from that era that they never performed live so we're thinking of doing power slave you know Ace is high two minutes to midnight which of course we're on live after death just that album all the way through. Flash of the blade. Uh, oh, and that I know, I know, and that's what you would get if, if 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 we played that all the way through. This is the best part about having someone in a tribute band that you've. That's that's the funny story, and I bring this up all the time. We were fans of each other before we even <laughs> met each other, before we even known, dude. I'd I'd go see this guy at the Santa Fe Springs swap me like every time they'd show up, or I'd go to the House of Blues just to go see them, man, like it is insane of how small a world is. I mean, me and Sammy would go it's to these concerts. Of- it is insane. It's that Iron Maiden poster, man. Like that's that's what it is. Uh, that Maiden poster is what brought me here. I think it was because I I commented uh, on a video when you were talking to Scott, I think, about uh, Maze ideas, and you brought up an, uh, an Iron Maiden maze, and I I lost my shit, and I commented, and then I mentioned I dropped Maiden USA's name in there, uh, saying you should check out this tribute band that I'm in, and you're like oh I fucking seen you guys. And I've seen are. you guys so many times. It's not even funny. Yeah. Yeah. So when we all meet up again, it's gonna be a fucking iconic moment. It's gonna be different. <laughs> iconic. The, the the plan is now to make Logan break on stage as much as possible. Make me break. 
bitch. Make you laugh, make you do something to as much as possible now. He, he'll probably I, hate me after, but that's the plan. Bro, I know what we're going to do. We're going to find pictures of my feet. <laughs> we're going to put out a big poster and bring it to the show. <laughs> and he'll just laugh. Uh, uh, I think yeah, it'll make the whole band laugh. <laughs> that, that would probably make me break. And it would probably make the guys in the band like, have no idea what that means. Go like, what the fuck is this guy doing with this giant picture of a foot? <laughs> nah, dude. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leap over and be like, I don't know. Dude. I don't know this is a promise, Logan. Like, the first Made in USA show back. I'm gonna buy you a beer. Oh, dude, I will hold you. I will hold you to that. Yeah, bro. You. Don't make a promise you can't keep, my friend. Nah, dog. We're gonna get some meachies at the swap meet, dog. <laughs> yeah. Menudo. Menudo. Remember when they you used to do that deal? That. Oh, dude. Well, when when we when we played swap meet, the deal was band got like fucking like we got a. Uh, food coupon and we got this in the because their dressing room or so you call it is like a i don't know how it is now cause it's a whole stage now actually it, they have a legit room yeah uh but before it was like a big crate yeah but in there we put, like we had all the beer that we wanted and it was it was nice I, it, so it really, I was gonna ask you about that we'll talk about that after the show but yeah i wanted to talk to you no, about that but 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 just, just to finish that up real quick um swap me is great because we get to play for three hours and we get to because of that like we get to pick out songs that we net when normally play during a 45 minute to an hour set which is right um, so, so it gives it yeah so it gives us an opportunity to go into the d cup but because it's three hours and it's staggered so it's like one hour set little break one hour set little break uh another one hour set and we're drinking in between those breaks so by that third set, and it's hot out, and we got beer in our system, and like I don't know how good it sounds. <laughs> I'm gonna but I'm gonna go off the words of uh, Vitology, the Pearl Jam tribute. Um, big fans of them too. The more beer you drink, the better we sound. <laughs> no, we we always say that, and we always say uh, when we're gonna play Wasted Years, we go we always call it Wasted Beers if if, if, right. if we're really drunk while we're. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Surprise guest. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> sorry, dog's got a shit. <laughs> anyway, um, but that was a little history of, of how we met, and and that was Logan's girlfriend. And I think that was your girlfriend, unless it was someone. Yeah, that was my girlfriend. Okay. I had some random girl just walking into my No, room. I would hate it to be like a sibling or something, and you're just like, that would be very awkward. Well, it was weird. I didn't understand what was going on. I just looked at my screen. I thought it was like one of you. It was like, oh, someone's coming in. Oh, nope. Nope, that's the room I'm in. <laughs> Um, but quick little history of like, how we hey, met. Sammy. I was like, "Hey, Sammy, why is my girlfriend walking through your room?" <laughs> she saw the feet pics too, bro. I, I I don't blame her. Um, but but all in I all, know we got off topic there. And a I little off topic, headed. but you know that's. Yeah. Hey, when shoot the shit returns, that's what it's all gonna be about. You heard cool. it here. I I, I hope. I, I hope people are still watching this, this or listening to this podcast. They're probably clicked <laughs> off like, now. Nah, fuck this. We're done. Um, <laughs> these three hooligans again? Yikes. Please comment, please comment below if, if you've gotten this far in, in, into the podcast. Right? I, I want to see if people are watching. <laughs> uh, Walking Dead's Jeffrey Dean Morgan, one of my favorite actors. Uh, back in the day, Supernatural, the dad. Uh, Thomas Wayne which a lot of people are hoping he becomes the Batman in the Flashpoint, but it's not looking like it. Um, it's set to uh, – in talks to do a future role in one of my favorite uh, superhero parody shows, The Boys. Now, if you guys never heard of The Boys, it's not really horror-related, but um, I think because more, it's more Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's been in a lot of horror stuff. But with The Boys, um, this show is basically a, a parody about uh, the Justice League and, and comics in general. But they don't only make fun of DC. They make fun of, like, Marvel and stuff. But basically there's these big shot superheroes and they work for an organization. And everything that you see is all up front. Like, none of they don't act exactly how they look on the screen. And you have this crew called the Boys who are basically – they team up to kill all these superheroes because they're nothing but fake bitches and they keep getting away with murder and stuff like that. A fantastic show. Season 2 is actually set to premiere on September 4th. Uh, the first three minutes actually just got uh, put online by Amazon recently. It looks amazing. I love the first season. I love the graphic novels. But uh, with Jeffrey Dean Morgan stepping into the picture, uh, it's not saying who he's going to play yet, but it's looking like they're in talks with him to join the show and to play a future role. So I'm hoping 
Um, he plays a superhero. That'd be really funny. Or if he plays like a, a friend of the boys or something like that. I'm hoping he's like on the team with the boys because like I really like Jeffrey Dean Morgan. And if he gets killed, like I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> So is is he even on The Walking Dead anymore? I I, I yeah. haven't kept up. The Walking he's still he's still, he's still on Walking on? Dead. Okay, yeah. How many seasons are are they at now? They're going on, I think, eleven or ten. Or more eight. zombies than ever. More zombies than ever. <laughs> Isn't that a wasn't that a Halloween Horror Nights? Uh, yeah, that's our joke. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, fucking. Uh, I guess yeah, it went over my head. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, fucking, yeah, I, I haven't kept up with Walking Dead since, I think, season six. Right. Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure if, if he was still on it, but no, uh, he's a great actor, and he was, I, I, I thought he, uh, the very small role that he got in Batman versus Superman, yeah. um, I, I thought he did, honestly, and I will defend that movie, too. I fucking I, love I, that movie. The movie's great. I will defend that movie. There's more haters than there are, uh, likers of that movie. Um, but I enjoy that movie, it, well, I'm not going to get off topic here. I'll try my best. Snyder but, Cut. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, that was for Justice League, though, right? It's not for Batman. But it's all right. We already got a Snyder Cut for, for Batman vs. Superman. That's called the Extended Edition. That's true. Um, no, that that whole scene with Ben Affleck uh, fighting those dudes in the warehouse, like straight out of an Arkham game. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to get sidetracked. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, uh, I thought he was very underrated in that role. I, I would have loved to see more of him as Thomas Wayne. Uh, really would have loved to see more of him as Thomas Wade and I and Maggie from uh, uh, what's her name? Maggie from, from Walking uh, Dead. Walking Dead is 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 her, Martha. Uh, Martha Wayne. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, I, I haven't seen the boys actually. Um, that's on my watch list. Um, I, I, I as you could probably tell, I don't watch a ton of TV. Um, I, I I'm a movie buff. Um, there I'm starting to catch up with certain shows more. I just I. With all the movies that I watch and my music and work, I just it's hard to find time to, to do that kind of thing, uh, to watch shows. But and once I'm in a show, like I binge the shit out of it, so it's hard for me to stop watching. This will be a fast binge too, because there's only eight episodes, and each episode is like thirty minutes. I finish it in like a day. Oh, right on. Oh, yeah. sick. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll have to give that a watch, but I'm I'm stoked that it's continuing, and I'm stoked that he's a part of it. Yeah, I uh, I wish the the episodes were longer, but. Can I'll get what we want? Seth Rogen also a producer on that show, uh, which is really cool. He's stepping out of the spotlight and he's doing a lot more uh, producing. I mean, he did that oh, show Preacher on AMC yeah, for the longest time. I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I totally noticed that. Yeah. So, Sammy, uh, any thoughts on Jeffrey Dean Morgan? I don't even know who he is. So, <laughs> get Lucille on this guy's head right now. Sammy, he's oh, Negan. He's, he's Negan. Oh. That's all you had to say was Negan. Okay, that changes the game. My dad's some of the best kills, bro. My dad's calling me. Hold on. Father, um, can you hear me? I'm write down the time for this one. Hello. Oh, fuck. Oh, my girlfriend just sent me this picture of my dog taking a shit. That was yeah. Looks like a nice shit. Sexy. And I'm thinking, it's going to go on my OnlyFans. Dang. It's going on the Patreon exclusive. All right. And cut time will be 23.10. Okay. All right. Uh, but, yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan coming on the scene. I'm excited. Sammy doesn't really know who he is. I know who Deacon is. So you should because it's the poster in my room that every time – He'd sleep over. He'd be like, I don't want Negan looking at me while I'm sleeping. I did not say that. <laughs> you said that one time. I probably did like right after he killed everyone. You said that one time. You're like, I don't know how I feel about Negan looking at me while I'm sleeping. Oh, he's probably like staring at me. Maybe I'm comfortable. I'll be all shy. He stares at me every night, I, man. I just look at him like, what's up, sexy? I'll so, be honest. I'll, I'll be honest here. I, I, I stopped watching The Walking Dead because of him. What? Uh, and he's a I, – I, I know. He's a great actor. I think I think the character has grown uh, from what I've heard over time on that show. People first hated him and then now they love him. Right. Uh, so it, honestly, it was with Glenn. Like it was such a. I, I didn't think they were gonna go that route. I know the comics went that route, but uh, they they really have strayed away from the comics. So when that came up, I was shocked. Like that was. I remember being on my couch watching the premiere, 
of uh was that season six uh that, that was, was season that? it was season Five eight or... no i didn't watch it that far that was that far dude it was like season eight or season seven when he, when he killed glenn yeah that was like season eight season seven no yeah really? dude yeah okay well, well that's when i stopped watching uh, I I just I I couldn't do it anymore. I was like I, I I felt like sick to my stomach when I watched that. And maybe that's good writing. I just I don't know. And I I envy him for being that ballsy and doing that. But uh, I know we're getting into Walking Dead and we're talking about just the actor. But uh, no, I, I I think he's a great actor though. Like he he uh, really he's really believable. He's really convincing. Um, so uh, anything with him in it, I'm I'm all for. Right. Um, all right, Alien and Predator, two of my favorite franchises, owned by 20th Century Fox, but now that is owned by Disney. Now it's called 20th Century Studios. Of course, the film rights are with Disney as well, or should I say 20th Century Studios now. However, an interesting development came up this morning that the comic book rights for the Alien and Predator properties are now belonging to Marvel Comics now, which were prior to <laughs> that they were on dark horse's comic book line dark horse famous for of course uh hellboy um and alien versus predator now joins the marvel comics family so that's going to be very interesting to see well of course again which is also owned by disney um that's going to be very interesting to see uh uh maybe hope uh, potentially uh crossovers that'd be really cool um right here there's a cool uh fan art of predator holding Iron Man's helmet with his spine. Of course, if you guys don't know, in the, in the movies, Predator takes people's skulls and spines as trophies. So that is really cool artwork of Predator holding Iron Man's helmet on, and then you see his spine. Um, that can be a really cool crossover, like the Avengers versus Predator. I'd be all for that shit, honestly. It'd be weird as, be weird as hell, but it would be cool, I, I have to admit. Yeah. That's Imagine awesome. Predator taking cap shield? Yeah, dude. That'd be dope. That'd be weird. <laughs> That idea, just like I can't really process, like just you know, think of a movie, think of like Predator, like making a cameo in like a Marvel uh, Avengers movie, like I. That'd be great. I, my my mind can't process that, but it sounds. But it sounds. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. Uh, but no, I I it's cool. I I feel bad for Dark Horse because they've lost like what like five fucking. Uh, names now. Uh, they lost Star Wars. They were doing Star Wars comics for a while. Then Marvel got the rights to that. That was a huge one when that happened. And then now it's Alien and Predator, which is two more titles added. Um, they must have just offered them a lot of money. However, you got to know with Dark Horse, their biggest seller is Hellboy. So I think they'll be okay. Um, so being that it's owned by, you know, Alien's been, or Fox has been owned by Disney for a, a little while now. Yeah. Uh, with the, uh, with the, Queen Alien be considered a Disney princess? <laughs> <laughs> That's all Sammy wants, man. That's all Sammy wants. Take a picture of Queen Alien wearing a little dress. Oh. Uh -oh. Spicy. He's going to go find some hentai now. He's going to go look at a bunch of hentai with Queen Alien on it. <laughs> no, but I think it's going to be cool, man. Uh, Marvel gets a lot of good writers. Uh, Donny Gates, obviously, is one of my – or Kate. Donny Gates, Kate. But he's he he in the past he's wrote he's written a lot of Venom comics and uh, Thor, uh, he's a fantastic writer. Worked with Marvel for a while, and so if he if he if they get people like him to do the writing for these comics, uh, I don't doubt in my mind that uh, they'd be really good comments. So, all right, the last thing to really uh, end this all up, man. Uh, I said the best for last. Uh, Westworld creators developing a Fallout TV series for Amazon. Now, Fallout, of course, a popular video game by Bethesda, um, of course, uh, spawned, I think, about, what, six games? Is it Fallout 1, 2, and 3, uh, New Vegas, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76, as well as the yeah. mobile app Fallout Bunker, so six and a half, seven, if you, if you want to yeah. count that bunker one. But, uh... They spawn all these video games, have a very big following, and it seems like uh, that following is going to be continuing to a uh, TV series. Now, uh, this is the, of course, another big franchise that has turned into a video game, uh, a video game into a TV series. Of course, the other one being The Last of Us. HBO is taking that and turning that into a TV series, which I'm very excited for. Um, and of course, I was now we got until I the second game. You know what? They might go a different route, though. Who knows? They, they may do something original with that. They can honestly – they can take the concept of that game and just use the characters and do a whole different story. Like, like imagine if they wrote the story. 
this. That like what the second game could have been and put in the show. I would be totally for that. Right. Uh, I'm gonna all get for a, a, a Joel trailer. prequel. A Joel prequel. That would be cool. That would um, be really cool. Speaking on the line of that, there's been a lot of fan casting going around too for who can play these characters. And Josh Brolin is one of the people that is being eyed to play Joel right now. And I think that's a fucking fantastic casting choice. Yeah, Josh Brolin or fucking what's his name? Uh, Hugh Jackman would be would be phenomenal. Hugh Jackman and I another one I thought too uh, John Hamm. John Hamm would be good. Yeah, I never thought of John Hamm. As yeah. Joel. And if and if anything, uh, either one of those, if any of them get that role, then you can substitute the other two to hopefully play Tommy. Uh, imagine Ellen Page and Hugh Jackman as Joel and Ellie. Joel and, like, and Ellie, that'd be dope. Uh, be really I mean, we need a good Tommy in there too, man. Who could play a good Tommy? But I don't – so here's the thing with me. I, I've really never played any of the Fallout games. I know the basic concept about it. It's supposed to be after like a post-apocalyptic world um, and you're like this character uh, walking around this post-apocalyptic world trying to survive and stuff. Um, so I'm not too familiar with the games. I know the basic concept of it. I know Sammy has played some of them in the past. I don't know if – Logan, have you played some of them in the past? No, uh, I've never played them. I've seen all kinds of gameplay. I know what the games are about. Um, I think they're. I don't know why I've never played them. I love Skyrim, which of course they made Skyrim. I just never got around to it. Um, but no, I'm I'm super stoked that it's getting a, it's getting a TV show. I think there's a huge fan base for it that'll really love it. Right, Sammy. I know you've played the games. You could probably elaborate a little bit more on this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what's gonna be really cool is to be able to see all the different factions. Hopefully. Um, that are throughout the country, um, you know, in their in their fight to see who really controls the U.S. Because right. most of the U.S. gets split into like different parts. Um, you know, and then you have obviously have like raiders who are just trying to cause chaos and survive on their own. You have all of the different vaults and stuff like that. And then the creatures, which are ridiculous. Like I don't know if you've ever seen the death calls, but those things are huge and terrifying. So um, it'll be really interesting to see like how that plays out um, and how like, you know, you know, is it going to be like told from multiple characters perspective? This is like different factions or is it going to be told like one character just trying to survive in the wasteland or whatever. So I'm excited to see where it's going to take place because like some of the games are taking place in like Vegas. I may be able to answer that question for you. I don't know about as far as taking place, but they did release a brief synopsis about the show. I read it to me. Let's see. So as Amazon teases, the world of Fallout is one where the future envisioned by Americans in the late 1940s explodes upon itself through a nuclear war in 2077. The magic of the Fallout world is the harsh harshness of the wasteland set against the previous generation's uh, Eudopane idea of a better world through nuclear energy. It is serious and harsh in tone, yet sprinkled with moments of ironic humor and B-movie nuclear fantasies and that word you meant to say was utopian utopia utopian then yeah yeah so it's utopian what did i say yeah i have no idea what the hell you said <laughs> uh i'm not good with words i don't really have a grasp on the, the english language in general so bro it's okay it's my first language too i'm still learning right but i don't know i think especially the team behind westworld who designed such a great and beautiful show and it's yeah. still going to this day. It's got a huge fan base. Um, and the thing about HBO is they really don't – I mean, this is not going on HBO. It's going to go on Amazon Prime. But, I mean, the thing about HBO, uh, they really are very picky about their shows. They really don't put out bad shows, in my opinion at least. They, they really yeah. do a lot of good work. So to see that the team who done Westworld is going to be doing Fallout, I have a ton of faith in this show. And I don't doubt my mind it's going to look beautiful. And I hope it's going to be at a spare no expense. Right. I, That's what I, I Westworld is. I can't think of any shows that are on Amazon that are originals. What what Amazon original shows are there? The Boys. Uh, Man in the High Tower. Man in the High Tower. There's another show with Ron Perlman, and there's another show with uh, Aaron Paul that are on there. Two different shows. Uh, the Marvelous Miss Maisie, I think, Marvelous is one of them. Marvelous Miss Maisie, yeah. There's a couple of so Amazon Prime. Uh, um, Jack Ryan, I think, uh, with John yeah. Krasinski, Tom Clancy. Yeah. Yeah, on right. there. I heard that's really good uh, too. It, it sounds like they're they're growing more uh, with their original content. I know they were. Uh, I, I know it's 
been said for a while and uh, COVID unfortunately put the production I think behind a bit but they started um, making an original series for the Lord of the Rings uh, obviously right. we have yeah that was a, have, a like a prequel right or it was going to be something yeah I mean yeah, I don't really know when it's supposed to take place because The Hobbit is considered a, a prequel. Uh, I think it was gonna, yeah, I think it was gonna be either before The Hobbit or in between Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. It was supposed to be like thousands would, of years before a lot of the stuff in Lord cool. of the Rings happened. Yeah, it's supposed to, yeah, I think it's supposed to take place probably way before The Hobbit. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I'm all for like I've said it in the past. I, I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, so Amazon sounds like they're like really starting to fork out like lots of new content. So I'm excited to. Uh, I'm excited for especially Fallout. Uh, even though I haven't played the games, I'm excited to um, th- to dive more into that world, um, and maybe it'll make me want to play more of the games if the show's good. Right. Um, so we'll see. Nice. Yeah. So that's pretty much it this week for the Miles Four podcast. That's the news that we found interesting in our opinions. Uh, leave some comments down below of what you guys thought about today's news and uh, how you guys feel about it going forward. Uh, leave some likes below to show your support of the channel. Of course, we got a merch store. Go ahead and check that out. Links in the description. Of course, we got masks, uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, women's t-shirts, tank tops, stickers. I'm trying to get hats up there, but that's been a hassle. But still, <laughs> it's it's coming. But um, go ahead and check out the merch store. Uh, links in the description below. Check us out on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. I bet Sammy likes it that I don't have him do it anymore because he usually messes it up. <laughs> He's all for that. Um, and tune in next week for another episode of the Miles Horror Podcast. Also check out uh, Maze Treatments, a show that we're doing with a bunch of amazing content creators creating uh, original mazes or IP-based mazes uh, for various events. Very good show, ongoing. Um, also, check out my second channel, Matt Slash Games, where we do a lot of gaming on there with my co-host Robert. So, uh, we will see you guys real soon. Peace.